Krishna. Hare Krishna. Let us, let us have a warm welcome for Guru Maharaj to have with us association today. So let us give twenty times Haribo for his his coming. Haribo, Haribo, Haribo.
भक्ति योगे न सेवते साधुना omniscient 
and they possess all transcendental qualities. So if one engages himself in the service of Krishna or his preliminary expansions with unfailing determination, although these modes of material nature are very difficult to overcome, they can, they, one can overcome them easily. This has already been explained in the seventh chapter. Right? Yeah. You know that verse in the seventh chapter? Yes? One has, one who surrenders unto Krishna at once surmounts the influence of the modes of material nature. To be in Krishna consciousness or in devotional service means to acquire equality with Krishna. The Lord says that his nature, the Lord said that his nature is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. And the living entities are part and parcel of the Supreme, as gold particles are part of a gold mine. Thus, the living entity in his spiritual position is as good The living entity in his spiritual position is as good as gold, as good as Krishna in quality. The difference of individuality continues, otherwise there would be no question of Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means that the Lord is there, the devotee is there, and the activity of exchange of love between the Lord and the devotee is there. Therefore, the individuality of two persons is present in the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the individual person, otherwise there would be no means to Bhakti Yoga. If one is not situated in the same transcendental position with the Lord, one cannot serve the Supreme Lord. To be a personal assistant to a king, one must acquire the qualifications. Thus, the qualification is to become Brahman, or free from all material contamination. It is said in the Vedic literature, Brahmaiva, one can attain the Supreme Brahman by becoming Brahman. This means that one must qual qualitatively become one with Brahman. By attainment of Brahman, one does not lose his eternal Brahman identity as an individual soul. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyanajana Saradaya Chakshur Vinyana Mena Asmai Sri Guru Venama Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapanatikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yeah. 
Vishnupadaya, Krishna Prasthaya Budhale, Srimadhi Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Hiti Namine, Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvisesa Sunyavadi, Vasakade Satarine, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Ranvaita Pradhanara, Sri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The fourteenth chapter, Lord Krishna has been describing the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. So hearing about them, we will naturally wonder how can we get free of the modes of nature? Because they're very entangling. We don't like to be controlled, we don't like to be prisoners. We want freedom. So we wonder, how can we get free of the modes of nature? Well, the modes of nature are controlled by Lord Krishna. The material nature is not independent. It's under the direction of Krishna. The material nature is personified by Mother Durga. Durga, or what do you call Amma, is it? Yeah. Amma. 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 So, anyway, how to get out of her control? She's very powerful. She's described in the Brahma Samhita. Shristi Vistati Pralaya Sajana Saktarika Chayeva Yashya Bhuvanani Vibhati Durga Echan Rupa Mapi Yashya Chachesta Desa Golden Kamadi Purusham Kamadi Lord Brahma is describing that this material nature is controlled by Mother Durga and Mother Durga is worshipped by all people because she is creating, maintaining an annihilating deity of the mundane world. But, Lord Brahma then goes on to say that Mother Durga moves like a shadow under the control of Lord Govinda. And then Lord Brahma says, I worship Govinda. So material nature is moving like a shadow under the control. Just like you can see shadows on the floor here. So the shadow is not independent, it moves when the object moves. So the same way Mother Durga is under the full control of Govinda. And this was realized also by Srila Vyasadeva. In the beginning, if you read Srimad Bhagavata, in the first canto it's described how Srila Vyasadeva after he got instruction from his guru, Narada Muni, that Srila Vyasate sat in meditation and he saw the Supreme Lord and he saw the material nature and the material nature was moving under the full control of the Lord, not independently. So when we're under the control of the material nature, when we put ourselves under the material energy, we should understand that this material energy is the agent of Lord Krishna. And of course, we want to get free of the material nature. Krishna had described already in the in, uh, seventh chapter, right? Very the fourteenth chapter. Way back in the seventh chapter. Lord Krishna had said, Devi Esha Punamai Mama Maya Turatyaya Mam Eva Eva Rapatyante Maya Vitam Tarantipi. Thank you. Yes. This material nature very difficult to overcome. 
I'm doing right? Yeah, yeah. Why is it so difficult to overcome the material nature? Because it's Krishna's energy. Krishna's energy, very powerful. So how to overcome it? Simply by surrendering to Krishna. Anyone who surrenders to Krishna, they can easily cross beyond the material nature. We have experience. Well, I, I have some experience. <laughs> how, to, how, how I'm struggling with the material nature, trying to get free. We used to go and steal apples. <laughs> You know, in the UK they don't grow mangoes. There's no mangoes. But they have apple trees. So we used to go and get quite apples. But the apple trees belong to somebody. And the man would have a dog. And sometimes he'd send his dog on us, you know. And then if the dog comes, how do you get free of the dog? You know, they don't let go, you know. They, they want to get you. And they don't leave you alone until the master comes. When the master of the dog comes, then it is under the control of the master. So the material nature is like that. It gives us a very hard time, a lot of trouble. We you know Mother Durga has her tree shoe, right? Yes. She has her spark thing with the three tree shoot that and she will stick them in you to stab you with that tree shoot. And the stabbing means miseries, troubles, different difficulties of life come upon us. Miseries of the material nature. Oh so hot. Oh so wet. Oh Earthquake, oh tsunami, oh, oh, whatever, drought, so many miseries come. Miseries of material nature, miseries of the body, oh my headache, oh my leg ache, oh my toothache, every so many parts of the body. Every little part of the body just made to give you pain and trouble. When you think about this body, how many parts of the body can give you pleasure? To experience pleasure in the body, very difficult. Very easy to get pain from the body. Even a little, every little cut in the finger, oh, it can be so painful. Oh, knock your elbow, oh, so painful. Somebody stands on your foot, oh, you Every part of the body is just made to give us pain. We are trying to enjoy the body. The body is just meant to give us pain and trouble. And then we have also miseries from other living entities. Neighbors. We get a lot of trouble with neighbors sometimes. The neighbor doesn't like the insect. The neighbor doesn't like the smell from the cookie. <laughs> so many things happen, you know, with the neighbor. Very difficult. So, neighbors are only one cause of it. There's so many other living entities. Insects, mosquitoes, there's also bacteria, germs, like COVID and things like that can give you a lot of trouble. So those are the miseries which Mother Durga puts on us just to let us know that we are under her control and her job is to make us miserable, to let us suffer, to let us know that we don't belong here. This is not our real home. And we should think how to get free. Just like if you're unfortunate enough, enough to be put into the prison house. So the person in the jail is simply thinking how to get free, how to get out. 
So this material world is the prison house. And we are the prisoners. And we have our prison uniform, the body, the material body keeps us under the modes of material nature. But here, Lord Krishna is telling us how we can get free of the material nature. We heard surrender to Krishna. That was one thing. Okay, how, how do I surrender to Krishna? Are you missing? Okay, I surrender. But it's not just lit, sir. You can't just say, I surrender. You have to. You have to actually come to that platform of surrendering yourself. And so here, Lord Krishna gives a bit more information about how we can surrender to Him. He describes we have to do abhi mamchayo vayabhi charena vayabhi charena bhakti vayabhi charena bhakti means. We have to do devotional service without falling down, without deviation. It has to be constant, continuous. Our devotion can be very sporadic. You know, one day we do some devotion, another day, oh, oh I'm too busy today. I oh, have other things to do today. So many reasons why we we deviate from devotional service. But devotional service in order to get us free from the material nature, it must be vayabicharina bhakti. It must be without deviation. It must be unbroken. In Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami describes it in a, a little different way in the, in the first canto, second chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam Sutta Goswami is re replying to the questions put by the sages in Naimisharanya and the sages wanted to know what what is the essence of the the scriptures of the Vedas, what is the main point of the Vedas so Sutta Goswami, in replying to the questions of the sages, he described devotional service. He said, Savai pumsam paro dharmo, yato bhaktir ad bhoksaji, ahaititi apratiyata yayatma suprasidati. He said, the supreme occupation. Sutta Goswami is describing the supreme occupation. It is not to be a lawyer. The supreme occupation is not to be a doctor. It is not to be some engineer or a software program or any of these things. What is the supreme occupation? Sabai Bhum Sam the Param Dharma, the supreme occupation. Yato Bhakti Adhoksaji. You have to do bhakti for the Supreme Lord, Adhoksaja, who is Adhoksaja, who is above everyone. And that service to him must be a haitiki, a pratihata. It must be unmotivated and uninterrupted. In the material world, we never find that. Nobody is serving without motivation. Right? Everybody is working. And why are we working? <laughs> there has to be the money. If who's going to work without money? That is what Krishna consciousness is like. In Krishna consciousness, one should not think, what will Krishna give me? Srila Prabhupada explains devotional service means to finish our business. Material world business means I will give you something you can give, give me back. I'm giving the goods, give me the cash. That's the material world. Right? 
No cash, no good. Right? We don't want to get stuck. But bhakti yoga is simply do service, giving service. We're in the service industry, right? Singapore is a service center. They don't produce any. They don't make anything in Singapore. They don't grow anything. It's all based on service, doing service. So bhakti yoga is also about service. But the difference in Singapore, their service is towards the, you know, a material service. You do some service to get something back. But our service is to Krishna. We simply want to give service to Krishna. Why should we give to Krishna? Because we owe Krishna a lot. Krishna has done so much for us. We have to recognize our relationship with Krishna, that he is the supreme friend, the best friend of everyone. We are thinking, no, no, I have my friends, I know who my friends are. But our friends in the material, they come and go. You don't keep them forever. When you're at school, you have friends. Then you go to college, then you have different friends. Then you get married, then you have different friends. It's all, everywhere we're changing. The friends come, but there's that one friend who's always with you, and that is the Lord in the heart. He's with us, and He's guiding us, and He's speaking to us. Are we hearing Him? <laughs> we want to hear from Him. We want to hear the Lord in the heart is giving us knowledge, remembrance, and forgetfulness. Here is it according to what we want. What do you want? Do you want knowledge or do you just want to forget? It's up to us. What do we want? One devotee was talking about uh, Prabhupada, uh, Shri Prabhupada was saying to devotee about he said, I'm giving you initiation. I'm giving you the beads and the name. He said, that is the ritual. He said, the rest is up to you and your determination. How determined are you to chant and to work for the service of Krishna? So, this is something we don't always think about. We don't always think that we have a duty, that we have a service. We're simply looking to Krishna. And we're, we're looking to take from Krishna. We're expecting Krishna should give. But our duty is to give to Krishna. And what do we have to give? Well, Krishna is not greedy to get your flowers or your fruit. You've got so much fruit here in Malaysia, right? You've got flowers also very cheap here. You know, and water, leaves, Tosi leaves, Tosi grows very easily also. What does Krishna want? Krishna wants not just the leaf, the leaf and the fruit and the flower and the water, but what does he want? Patram, Ashnami Ashnami Krishna said, I eat what you offer. I will eat. But there must be bhakti. If there is no bhakti, if there is no devotion there, then it's not pleasing to Krishna. And Krishna mentioned, Yome bhaktiya prayachiti, tadaham bhakti upadhyam. 
In fact, it's mentioned twice there in the Vedas. So Krishna wants that bhakti, that devotion. We are practicing bhakti yoga. There must be that love in offering to Krishna. It's not just make the offering, ring the bell, close the curtains, put the toes in it. <laughs> there must be the calling to Krishna. There must be the genuine devotion. The feeling Krishna wants that love. And he wants that love in all of our activities. So we, we, we're going to do bhakti. We want to do that bhakti without falling down, without deviation, constantly serving Krishna constantly and it should be our service should be favorable to Krishna. Anya Vilasi Sasunam Jnana Karmavi Anabritam Anukulena Krishnanu Anukulena Krishnanu Shilanam Bhakti Rukam That is Bhakti, that is the highest devotion. When the devotion is rendered without material desires, without desire for fruit of gain or for liberation, one should constantly set Krishna favorably. Anukoyena, Krishna no Krishna means also those people in relation to Krishna. Prabhupada mentions here, maybe you want to serve Lord Rama. Somebody else, they want to serve Lakshmi Narayan. Okay. They are expansions of Krishna. Different forms of somebody is the devotee. Lord Nasringa Day. We have the beautiful Nasringa altar in there. So, that's also expansion coming from Lord Krishna. And that we can devote ourselves to these different forms. But, it must be favorable to Krishna. Favorable. So just like, you know, Kamsa is always remembering Krishna, but he's thinking how to kill Krishna. So that's not favorable. <coughs> Sishupal was envious of Krishna. He was always thinking of Krishna as well, but he was very envious of so that is not the our service to Krishna must be pleasing. There must be that genuine love, the desire to want to please Krishna. So Lord Krishna is describing here, you can come to the level of Brahman. You transcend the modes of material nature. Above the material nature, there is Brahman. We are all Brahman, right? We say, Aham Brahmasmi. The Maya Valis, like the people also say, Aham Brahmasmi. Right? We're all Brahman. So, we come to that level of Brahman by doing devotional service. But, we are not Maya Valis. The Maya Valis, they just, they're, they're thinking, Ah, oh, Brahman. Oneness, we have achieved the oneness with the Supreme. That is not for us. We want that Brahman, that is the beginning of bhakti. We begin from there. Just like with chanting Hare Krishna mantra and with initiation, you begin your bhakti. You haven't perfected the bhakti, you have to go on from there. But the bhakti begins on that platform of the Brahman. And on that platform of Brahman, we understand, I am not the body, I am the soul. But what is that soul? That soul is a part of the Supreme Soul. We are all a part of Krishna. We have a relationship with Him. So we want to 
revive that, to come back to that consciousness, understanding our eternal relationship with Krishna. And the best way to do that is by chanting Hare Krishna, just like this evening we had the nice kirtan, these young men were chanting, nice sankirtan. So that sankirtan, that is very powerful in helping to awaken God consciousness. We say, Param Vijayate, Shri Krishna, this sankirtan, this is the process. Kali Yuga Dham, Hari The process of practicing religion in this age, Hari Nam Sankirtan. Everyone must do Sankirtan. And you should do it every day. Right? Every day. You do chanting. Yeah? You do Kirtan every day. Right? Every home you can have Kirtan. Not difficult. Oh, I don't have Madanga. Oh, it doesn't matter. Just clap your hands. You have hands. Use your hands. You have a tongue. Chant. Every day do some kirtan of the holy name. And you will awaken your consciousness of Krishna. Very quickly by doing sankirtan. So that is how we can get free of the material energy. That is how we can come to the spiritual, the transcendental platform very quickly if we want to get free. The problem is some people say, well, uh, I'm happy, I'm enjoying being kicked by Maya, I'm enjoying suffering the material world. There's a, a story, even Indra, Indra the king of heaven, he got cursed by Brihaspati to become a pig. And so he got the body of a pig. And then after some time, Brihaspati came and said, okay, now you come back. You've been a pig long enough, come back. He said, no, I like it here. <laughs> Why are we leave? I have my pig wives. I have my pig children. I get my pig food every day. I'm happy here. So Brihaspati said, okay, just wait. I'll go and get the butcher. <laughs> and the butcher came with a big knife. He said, well, where's that big fat pig? Right? Indra was the fattest pig. All right, take me, take me. <laughs> so material life is like that. We're trying to be happy here. We get little bits of suffering and we think, but we get little bits of enjoyment, a lot of suffering, but it's, oh, I'm enjoying it. So much struggle for happiness. A little bit of happiness and we forget all the suffering. There's a story, the one man, he was, he was in the forest, he got chased by a tiger. So he was running, he was running, running, he didn't look where he was, he ran, he fell into the well. He fell down into this well. Somehow he grabbed hold of a vine which was growing out the side of the well. He was holding on to the vine and up top was the tiger. He looked down the bottom of the well and in the bottom of the well there was a big cobra. And the big cobra is looking, oh, I'm going to get some food today. And the tiger's up there and the tiger's looking, waiting to get the man. And what happened? A little bee came by and it was carrying some honey. And a little bit of honey fell on the man's head. It rolled down his face, it went into his tongue. He tasted the honey, but oh, so nice. <laughs> now I'm enjoying this material life. Everywhere, every moment, suffering. A little bit of happiness. Oh, I'm enjoying it. So we have to understand. Don't be in any illusion. The material world, Prabhupada, this is not the fit place for any respectable person. We should want to get out from here. Don't stay here. Don't come back again in this body, another body. Right? We have our book, Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation. 
the last chapter is called don't come back <laughs> if you come back again fail just like you're doing a course you're studying and if you fail you have to do the course all again it's a lot of trouble isn't it yes or maybe you're learning to drive you want the driving license and you're driving and they fail you So on the same, this human life, this is a real test. If we fail in this life, we have to come back. And you don't know. You may not be born in Malaysia again. You don't know where you're going to take your next birth. Or you may be in Malaysia. You may be a dog or a cat in Malaysia. Or you may be a tree. You don't know what's going to happen. So be careful. Use this life to become Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Any questions? Anybody? Maharaj, actually, uh, when we are uh, worshipping Bhavan, we don't expect. But is it correct not to expect anything that knowing that Bhagavan will give us what we need, or we need to ask something from Him. Well, the pure devotee is not going to ask anything from Him. He will ask, please engage me in your service. That is the only prayer of the devotee. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu teaches us, Nadanamna Janamna I don't want wealth or followers or anything. I simply want your devotional service birth after birth. He doesn't even ask for liberation. So the devotee, in that mood of pure devotee, he will just simply want service. Please engage me in your service. That is a constant prayer of the devotee. If you're asking Krishna for something, that is not, that is more like Dhruva Maharaj, right? That is, becomes karma in Isra Bhakti. Gajendra was in distress and then Karma Mishra. So we don't want to, we're not so good to ask Krishna. Krishna knows our heart. We don't have to tell him. What we do need to tell him is please engage us, please engage me in yourself. So the constant prayer of the devotee, please engage me in your service. And chanting Hare Krishna is also a prayer. It's a prayer and it's also the answer to our prayer. We are praying to Krishna, please engage me in your service. But by chanting Hare Krishna, that is the answer to our prayer because that is service to Krishna. So it's both a prayer and at the same time it's the answer to our prayer. So chanting Hare Krishna very important, our most important business in the day, must chant the holy name. Sankirtan, Japa, everything, constantly chant the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Kirtaniya Sajahari, always chant the holy name. You're taking your shower, chant the holy name. You're taking your prasada, chant the holy name. You lay down to go to sleep, chant the holy name. Constant, you're driving the car, you can be chanting. Spiritual health is what is important. Good health. Prabhupada would go for a morning walk, chant, chanting japa. So you can do that. Yes, you want to keep good health. Regulate your eating. Don't eat too much. Don't eat much at night. 
is in the daytime rather than at night. Certain habits, the, the lifestyle of a devotee is healthy because the devotee doesn't have any any vices. He's not engaged, not taking any intoxication or doing any of these things. So the lifestyle of a devotee is naturally healthy. We have to also be careful though, not to take advantage, like eating, you see how it's all prasada, you eat too much prasada. So we have to, we have to be regular in our activity. Like tomorrow's ekadasi. Yes. So that, we say, how can we be regular? You know, tomorrow we have to be <laughs> Well, we're regular every two weeks, so it's a fasting. So that's regular. Every couple of weeks we have a courtesy, and on the courtesy day we don't eat so much. We minimize eating. No grains, no beans. That is, and, and the, the courtesy is the day to increase remembering Krishna, doing more healing and chanting. That is the real purpose of the Kharasi. The last Kharasi we had kind of a Nirjali Kharasi. So many devotees, they were fasting, not taking even water the whole day. And then in December, there is Vaikuntha Kharasi. It's not really in the Gaudiya calendar. It's not for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, but uh, Sri Vaishnavas, I think, they stay awake the whole night. So we often do a program for that at KL, in our KL temple. We have a program the whole night. You may like to also do a program here somewhere in Johor. Try, try to do more programs. Teach the people how to follow. We're coming up to also this year we have the Purushottam month. So Purushottam month is also a good time for new people to take advantage. You get a lot of blessings in Purushottam month. Do more chanting. Do more service for, for the Lord. You get more mercy in the Purushottam month. Purushottam month, very bad time for business. <laughs> No good time. You don't get married in Purushottam months, right? It's the modes of nature are very... Nobody will have marriage during that time. And but it's very good for bhakti, devotional sex. Take advantage and you try to encourage people, you know, get them to read the Bhagavad Gita, get them to do some seva, tell them about Purushottam months, get more mercy, the more good, more seva during that time, you get much more Amen. blessings. You want the blessings, you have to do seva. So we are think, always thinking, how to get the blessing, how to get mercy of Krishna, by seva. Krishna said, as you surrender to me, I reward you accordingly. So we want to surrender more and more to Krishna, do more and more service for Krishna. And service means, begins with chanting and hearing about Krishna. And then when you chant nicely and you hear nice, then you can remember. Remembrance will come naturally. So like this, we want to understand how to apply ourselves in the service of Krishna. Yeah, 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 yeah
Too much. Also attending the Bhakti Vaibha Ovan. Is he? Bhakti Vaibha Ovan last year. Well, somebody made nice. Yeah,